Unit 8, Day 1, The Polygon Angle Sum Theorem. A polygon is a plane figure that meets the following conditions. 1. is formed by three or more segments called sides. 2. No two sides with a common endpoint are collinear. And 3. Each side intersects exactly two other sides, one at each endpoint. Each endpoint of a side is called a vertex. Now, pause for a second and then decide whether each of the figures is a polygon. If not, explain why. Then press play and check your answers with me. Hopefully your answers match mine and you notice the same problems that I did. This is rounded, this is not closed, and this intersects itself in the middle of the polygon. A polygon is called convex if any line that contains a side of the polygon does not contain a point in the interior of the polygon. What that means is over here, when I extended all the sides of the polygon, you can see that none of those lines are going to cross and intersect the inside of the polygon, so this is called convex. A non-convex or concave polygon is just a polygon that is not convex. So when we extend all the sides of this polygon, you can see that this side and this side intersect into the interior of the polygon, so that's called concave. Now pause and state whether the polygon, each one, is convex or concave. Hopefully you got the same answers that I did. Now think of concave as having something caved out of it. So part of the polygon has been taken out. Equilateral means that all sides are congruent. Equiangular means that all angles are congruent. Now when we talked about triangles, we said that if it's equilateral, it's always equiangular and vice versa. However, for polygons with sides greater than 3, you can be equilateral and not be equiangular, and you can be equiangular and not equilateral. So because they're not always assumed that both are true, we have another term called regular for those polygons that are equilateral and equiangular. So based off of those definitions, go ahead and pause and then state whether each polygon is best described as equilateral, equiangular, regular, or none of these, and then check back. Hopefully your answers are correct. This one only has angles marked congruent. This one doesn't have all angles congruent or all sides congruent. This one has all angles congruent and all sides congruent. And then this one only has sides that are congruent. Now we're going to talk about the polygon interior angles theorem. An interior angle is the angle created inside of the polygon by the sides of the polygon. The sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex n-gon is n minus 2 times 180, which equals the total interior angle measure. So we're going to use the variable n a lot during the polygons unit, but you need to know what it stands for. n stands for the number of sides and also the angles of a polygon. So here when we say n-gon, that just refers to the number of sides it has. The measure of each interior angle of a regular n-gon, so remember regular means that it's equilateral and equiangular, so every angle is exactly the same. So if you're just trying to find one of those, then you use the formula n minus 2 times 180 to give you the total interior angle measure, and then you're going to divide that by n to give you one interior angle measure. Now we're going to work out these examples to find the value of x. You, re you should remember problems that we did like this back in Unit 4 when we talked about triangles. And you know that the interior angles of a triangle always add up to 180. Well, now we're going to be dealing with polygons that are not just triangles. So these four angles are not going to add up to 180. That's what we need to use that formula n minus 2 times 180 for. This is going to tell us exactly what all four of these add up to, our new total. So again, n is the number of sides. We have four sides, 4 minus 2 times 180. 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 times 180 is 360. So every four-sided polygon adds up to 360. Now we want to do the second part of the problem. X plus 87 
plus 113 plus 75. All four angles add up to equal 360. So we need to combine like terms so we can solve this equation. So x plus 275 equals 360. Then subtract 275 from both sides and you should get x is equal to 85 degrees. And that's your final answer. So I want you to pause, try this next problem the same way we did this, and then check back with me. Hopefully you found x to be 117 degrees. If you didn't, go ahead and press pause, check your work with mine, and see where you might have made a mistake. Now I want you to take that same idea with this problem, except this time instead of giving you angle measures, I've given you expressions for each of them. But take the same idea as how we solved on the page before, try to find the value of x. Then when you're ready, check back in with me for the answer. Hopefully the first thing you did was find the total interior angle measure using n minus 2 times 180, the number of sides being 5, then you should have found the total interior angle, angle measure to be 540 degrees. Then you should add up each of the angles, all of them together, and set it equal to 540. Then you can take all of the x terms, add them together, and all of the constants and add them together, and you should get a much smaller equation, 35x plus 15 equals 540. Then you subtract 15 on both sides, and then you divide by 35, and you should get a final answer of x equals 15. If this isn't what you got, then make sure you pause, check your work with mine, and see where you might have made a mistake. In this next set of problems, we still need to find the value of x. However, we only have x at one angle measure, and we don't know what the others are. But we do know that each of these angles is going to be exactly the same because they're marked with 1. So we want to use that formula n minus 2 times 180 to give us the total interior angle measure. Then since all of them are exactly the same, you want to divide by n, the number of angles that we have, and that will give us one angle measure. Now let's go and plug in what we know. We know that the number of sides is 6 and we want to divide that by the number of angles and that will give us the value of x. So 6 minus 2 is 4. You can do a little bit of work in your head. 4 times 180, that's going to give us 720. And then we want to divide 720 by 6, which gives us 120 degrees is equal to x. So not only is x equal to 120, but each of these other angles are also equal to 120. Go ahead and pause and try the second problem, and then check back with me when you finish. Hopefully you found x to be 135 degrees. If you didn't get 135, go ahead and press pause. Again, check your work with mine and see where you might have made a mistake. This next type of problem we're given the measure of each interior angle of a regular n-gon. So first let's process that. It's a regular polygon, so we know that all the angles and all the sides are congruent, and they're giving us one interior angle. They want us to find the value of n, which is the number of sides. So we're actually going to use the same formula that we used on the page before, n minus 2 times 180, the total interior angle measure, divided by the number of angles we have to give us one angle. Except this time, the information that we plug in is going to be a little different. This time we don't know the number of sides, but we do know the measure of that one angle. So we're actually working backwards. So in order to do this, we're going to put the side over 1, so it's like a proportion, and I want you to cross multiply. We get 90 times n is equal to n minus 2 times 180. And then we want to distribute this. 90n is equal to 180n minus 360. And then we want to get the two n's on the same side. So subtract 180n from both sides. On this side, you should get negative 90n. And on this side, we're left with negative 360. Then last step, divide both sides by negative 90. And we get n is equal to positive 4. 
So we know that a four-sided regular polygon has an interior angle of 90 degrees. Go ahead and pause, try to solve for the number of sides for a regular polygon that has an interior angle of 108, and then check back with me. Hopefully you got the answer n equals 5. If not, pause, check your work with mine, and see where you might have made a mistake. Next we want to talk about the polygon exterior angles theorem. And so, exterior angles are the ones outside of the polygon, created by extending the side of the polygon past the edge. We've talked about this before with triangles, but we're going to talk about it again. The sum of the measures of the exterior angles of a convex, one angle at each vertex, is 360. We don't have some formula, it's just 360 degrees every time. It doesn't matter how many sides it has, it's always 360 equaling the total exterior angle measure of any polygon. The measure of each exterior angle of a regular n-gon, so again, regular meaning all the interior angles are the same, which means that all the exterior angles have to be the same. 360 divided by n gives us one exterior angle measure. So when we're solving problems, they're going to look like this. We have all these exterior angles listed, and so we know that all of them are going to add up to 360. So we take 3x plus 62 plus 4x plus 47 plus 93 plus 46. All of the exterior angle measures, you're going to add them up and set it equal to 360. So when we do that, and then you add up all the x terms, you get a total of 7x. When you add up the constants, you get 248, and that is going to be equal to 360. Then you want to subtract 248 from each side, and you'll get 7x is equal to 112. Divide by 7, and x is equal to 16. Now, I want you to pause, try the second problem, and then check back with me. Hopefully you got the answer x equals 3. If you didn't, again, pause, check your work with mine, and see where you might have made a mistake. Here, you're given the measure of each exterior angle of a regular n-gon. So again, we're talking about regular polygons that have every angle that's exactly the same. Now, if every angle inside is the same, every angle outside also has to be the same. So we want to find the value of n. So when we look at this very first one, we want to take the total of the exterior angle measures. When you divide it by the number of angles we have, since we have n number of interior angles, we also have n number of exterior angles. So 360 divided by n is going to give us one angle measure. So we plug in what we know, 360 divided by n, which is what we're looking for, equals 45 degrees. So in this, again, just put this over 1, not to proportion, cross multiply, you get 45 times n is equal to 360. When you divide both sides by 45, you'll get n is equal to 8. So that means an 8-sided regular polygon has exterior angles equal to 45 degrees. Pause, try the second one, and then check back with me. Hopefully you got n is equal to 6. If you didn't, go ahead and pause, check your work with mine, and see where you might have made a mistake. Now, that's it for today. Make sure that you have all the notes and all the examples fully written out, because when you come into class next, we're going to work on the worksheet. Now, if there's something that you feel like you didn't understand, go back and watch the video again, and make sure that you are listening carefully. Okay, I'll see you in class.